Well, right, what's up guys? So if you remember right, while we were doing the balloon thing the other day, I ended up uh, getting one of the strings wrapped up in my in my uh, prop down in the bell. So underneath the coil actually. So I had to end up. Uh, you can you can see here. I took the heat shrink off the maker fire, unsoldered that. Uh, I didn't show this first step because I didn't know if I was going to videotape this, but I might as well just for educational purposes only. It's real easy to get the bell off. Down here on the bottom, you can see on one of these other motors here, you've got... got one of those pieces that you've just got to pop off and you've got one of those pieces that just slides right off and then you can just pull the bell right off just like that so this bell needs to be kind of cleaned out just a little bit uh, you can see that blue in there I think that's from the glue putting these uh, little magnets in and stuff so so anyways I got this other one out here for kind of a reference point you can see all the twine that's wrapped up in there it goes all the way under here and it looks like it stretched out that twine just a little bit because you can see how the difference in those how tight that one is on the inside and that one's not so I'm probably gonna have to get a new motor but I'm definitely gonna get that twine out As if you get anything stuck under here. I couldn't get it out by just pulling on it, so. I'm just going to try to unwind it as much as I can. There we go. Now, seems like it's caught. It's caught under there. And I don't want to take that out. I don't know if that comes out. Oh, just needing a nice little pull. Let the rest of that twine out. I do not like how that's all loose under there at all. So you can see it in there real good. In there. Pretty much if this starts acting up too bad, then I'll have to get the motor replaced. Well, I'm gonna monitor it for monitor it for a while. And make sure, see with this with this coil that it has in here, the, the current flows into it. So see these these can actually touch these other coils and it's not going to affect the other coils, it's not going to turn them into a magnet uh, it's the, the wires coming from this that wrap around here actually go into a certain set of coils and then it charges that so 
being pulled and stretched just a little bit as long as they're not broken shouldn't affect it too much if at all I'm just trying to inspect it to make sure so and then if you got even if you got if you got these at from Emacs in the little Emacs thing you should get spare parts so if you accidentally stretch that one out like I did to that one you should have some extra ones each each Emacs motor comes with a, a couple extra o-rings and a, a couple extra washers problem now for me is finding them Gmx box I put them in. <laughs> it's got a little lip on it on the end. That's what that goes around. So now when you first put this on it's going to want to just slam shut. It's going to want to just slam down like that. And then this. Kind of squeeze that shut. Both of your fingers. Sorry, I didn't get that on camera. Just kind of got. Pop that in there. You can widen this open as much as you want in order to get it off and everything. It's really not that strong. And you just kind of crimp it around with your fingers. And you've got a working motor again. So it's pretty much that easy if you want to go in. There's the twine that was stuck inside of it. If you want to go in and clean your bells and stuff. You can definitely do that. Uh, another motor that I've got to fix. I'll go ahead and go ahead and clean this arm off a little. Lay down some new sticky tape. Basically, I put the sticky tape down, so uh, heat shrink can stick on there. But I'm not sure if I have that size heat shrink anymore. I think I might be out. I might see if I can find a substitute. See if this will fit over the top of it. Nice. This bird has been beat up a million times over. I kind of, kind of like the wear and tear on it. Slip that over the top of it all. Trying to get it back as far as it'll go because I 
I usually, whenever I'm doing this, I have the the uh, sticky tape out so I can stick this down. But I don't know if I'm going to do it that way, so I'm just going to hold that. You're not going to be able to see this because I can barely see it. Make sure that you have a pair of pliers, a good pair of pliers. It makes this a ton easier. Don't do what I'm doing. I'm doing it the hard way. Anyways, that's how you take apart a bell if you get something stuck down inside of it. That's how you take apart one of those. Anyways, we'll see you guys later. Y'all have a good one. I'm going to clean this thing up.